So what happens when one of the spiritual leaders in the mega hit book and film, The Secret, team up with an award-winning trio of multi-platinum producers and a host of celebrated guest singers? Well, the answer is Transcendance. Yes, the answer is this collection in danceable songs whose words have the ability to transform limiting beliefs and transform your life. With me is Michael Bernard Beckwith, visionary founder and spiritual director of the Los Angeles-based Agape International Spiritual Center. He is an award-winning author and has been a popular guest on Oprah, CBS's Eye to Eye with Katie Couric, Larry King Live, and Tavis Smiley. Well, welcome to the show. I am so happy and honored to have you. You know, it's my joy to be here with you. Well. When I was presented with this CD, this lovely CD, I, I kind of took a second look and I said, Transcendance, a dance CD. Michael <laughs> Bernard Beckwith. I, I, was, I was a little taken back. Why the CD? Well, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that three-letter word, fun. <laughs> <laughs> and the other three-letter three, three -letter word, joy. And so this CD is infused with um, ecstatic dance beats put together by uh, Stephen Bray and... Uh, Great master mixologist uh, John Patoker, and uh, overlaid uh, uh, with my sermons and messages that I put in when I went into the studio. So it's really, as you said earlier, it's just bringing a powerful m message with the music. So we call it putting spinach in the ice cream. So is this really, it, as to me, it seems like it's starting to become very popular, this type of music, because in the past, it would be like, woe is me, I lost my love, and it's kind of that <laughs> victim, you know, like right, energy, right, right. right? When I put this on, I had it in my bag from Gate, all of a sudden I, I, I said, I'm going to put this on. And it was phenomenal. I have to say the music of Agape, and we have to get into for people that don't know Agape and what its mission is, but it was, I couldn't, I didn't want to turn it off. I mean, it really had a lot of the dance type of right, music. Right, right, right. But it also has a great message. And that's, I think, what you're trying to get across. Absolutely. Putting the spinach in the ice cream, so to speak. So, so what is the goal of this? Obviously, it's to get out there, but before the, the show, we were talking, and you were saying how this is starting to grow into other areas besides, you know, somebody like myself that would be a consumer. It can also be It's for interesting how it's going out in the community. Of course, we know that the, the master DJs are now taking it and sampling it and uh, doing remixes on it, and people are using it in dance clubs and parties and things of that particular nature. But what surprised me, we have teachers now in certain school districts, like in New York, who are going in and working with the children. Uh, there's, um, there's a nine-minute, 11-second meditation uh, on there as well. I love it, by the way. Yeah, having, <laughs> having the kids relax and meditate. Yeah. Uh, in some of the preschools and elementary schools, they're using it for recess and the kids are dancing mm -hmm. and they're able to hear a kind of a rap music, but they don't have to uh, censor the lyrics mm -hmm. because the lyrics are all about who a person really is. It's yeah. uplifting, it's inspiring, it's transforming. So we're getting all these emails back now and these letters thanking us for this particular project. And it's not just the party people, it, yeah. it's everybody. You know what I thought too when I, when I was listening to this, this might be a second market for you, but going into the the you know the workout clubs, yes. right? I'm sitting there thinking to myself, this would be great as an aerobic class. It's because happening. It is okay. See, yoga, the yoga studios, okay. the workout. Yeah. Uh, the individuals are doing it, so it's just kind of crossing the boundaries everywhere. So for for the people that don't know what agape is, what is the mission of agape, and what really is agape? Agape is a, is a trans-denominational spiritual community, which means it's a spiritual teaching of the perennial religion that cuts across all denominations, and we honor every path to spiritual growth, development, and unfoldment. So in, when you come to Agape, they oftentimes call us the United Nations of spiritual communities because you'll see a Sikh there, you'll see a Buddhist, you'll see a Christian, you'll see a Muslim. You'll see, everyone's there worshiping the one presence by whatever name you wish to call it. It's, it, we, we worship that and we celebrate that. And so our, our, our mission is to have individuals discover who they are as spiritual beings, cultivate, activate, and express their gifts mm -hmm. so that we build a kind and just global society. So, you know, with that, in a, in a CD like this, and I want to get to your book because there's so many wonderful products with this. I was telling you when I was in the car, I, I, I had a, a, one of those moments where you had a bad phone call and uh. I got into the car and I put this on. 
right? And I thought, you know, this really shifted my mood. But there are times where somebody might not be able to shift their mood. We're in a really interesting mm -hmm. time in life, if you think about it. Some people say, oh my gosh, it's 2012, the world is ending, everything's <laughs> going to pot, right? Right, right, right? And then other people go, wow, this is a really great growth period. Right. So for those of us that need to shift, what would you say to them? Basically, you know, we're in a period of time where everything is speeded up. Energetically, the earth has speeded up, the, the rate of technology's growth has speeded up. So I like your second answer better. Yeah. We're in a time of great opportunity. Whereas if an individual understands that recession breeds and brings forth resourcefulness, it's a time for all of us to become more resourceful, more, more innovative, to discover the genius that is within us, which is why at Agape we put a special emphasis on practice. We have spiritual principles that we practice, our life visioning, our prayer, our meditation, our celebration, our fellowship, our sacred dance, our movement, all of that combined so that we're able to catch, capture a vision of the possibility for our life and then walk in that direction. So this isn't a time to read the newspaper and call it reality. <laughs> yeah. The newspaper is really a, a grand prayer request of a society that has lost its way. Mm -hmm. So we look at the newspaper and we see that it's really a society asking for people to hold us in prayer so that we can grow. So this is a growth opportunity where people can rediscover the power, the, their own gifted nature, and to set it free. So for you know you mentioned life visioning i just want to talk a little bit about his new book just came out called life visioning and you mentioned that what exactly is life visioning life visioning is a a, a transformational spiritual technology that allows an individual to go within and to begin to see articulate and live the vision that we're meant to live one of the things i teach is there's a life you should live and a life you're meant to live the life you should live comes from external authority figures. The life you're meant to live has been placed there by the creator presence. So there's a lot of people that don't know the difference. Well, I'm going to break it down. <laughs> For instance, the life that an acorn is meant to live is an oak tree. You see, it's not meant to live as a maple. And so there's something planted within all of us that we're meant to live. We all have a beautiful destiny. Every single being has a powerful destiny locked within them. But we have to create the right condition for that destiny to unfold. And so the life visioning process assists us in seeing, articulating, and living that destiny. And when, when, when we lock into it, there is no circumstance, no situation, nothing that has happened in our past that can prevent it from happening. That's how powerful it is. So let's look at the life visioning because there's I think there's a couple of components to it right absolutely there's the visioning of the big the the, the part of you that is destined to be you the yes. vision of that right and then you mentioned practicality and I was looking at this book and it seems like it has both because absolutely. a lot of people have vision but they don't have the practicality some people have practicality but they don't to, want to you have to have both one of my pet pet statements is um, vision without action is a fantasy and action without vision is chaos. So you have to have both. Yes. You see, yes. you have to have your vision and then your vision informs your action. You see, but a lot of people are out here living ambitiously and they're taking a lot of actions but with no greater vision, so they're creating chaos in the world. So you have to have both. So this book uh, brings together how you can tap into your vision and then with a deep listening capacity be guided into what action to take that will inform who for, inform you of who you are and what you should do next. All of that is, is, is in there. It's, a, it's really a, an easy read, but it carries a lot of transformational information. So let's back up the story a little bit, because life visioning is something you've done for a number of years. Yeah, over 25 years. Okay, so yeah. when you first started this, and you were looking at agape and who you were going to become, that, that you know, acorn that's going to be destined to be the acorn tree, and in this case, Agape International and a right. spiritual leader. Did you know then that it was going to be as full as it is today? I had intimations of it. I had vision. I had more than one vision of it. At one point when I began the process, the vision that I had, agape was really, really big, and I was really, really small. <laughs> yeah. So it was metaphorical of the idea that I had to grow into it. Mm -hmm. So over the years, through the life visioning process and meditation, etc., I grew into the vision. Yeah. 
So now it's, it's, it fits. It's, it's not, the clothes aren't too big for me. Yeah. You see? Now, yeah. if somebody were to jump into my shoes, they'd probably suffer from post-traumatic stress. <laughs> <laughs> from <laughs> flying here, going here, speaking here, teaching here, doing this radio program, doing that radio program. You know, it'd be like, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to stop and ask, how do I do all of that, I'd get burnt out. Yeah. So I don't ask. I just yeah. do it. You just do it. You yeah. know, it's, it's, just, it's a part of the it's impulsion. Interesting. It's interesting you say that, because I remember at 18, when I started as a disc jockey, I was telling people to believe in themselves. And at that time, I had no idea. Life Bites was just, that, that wasn't even in my thought process. Right. You haven't even taken a big bite Yeah, yet. yeah, I didn't take a big <laughs> bite. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, wh what would you say to somebody that knows that they're in touch with their acorn? Mm -hmm. You know, that they are this acorn and they have a destined to do something in their life. What would be the thing that you would say besides read your book? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, you, you want to get into a feeling tone of what it feels like to live your vision. You know, the, the, the universal laws respond to a, a feeling. And oftentimes people are feeling lack, la mm -hmm. lackluster, not enough, unworthy. Uh, there's not enough good to go around. They're living in a, an emotional content of scarcity. Mm -hmm. So you do your inner work so that you're actually feeling that you're supported. Wow, yeah. You're actually feeling that you are enough. Even if all the evidence says it's not, now the universe will respond to that feeling. Yeah. And it will begin to wrap you up. And from that feeling of overflow, from that feeling of overflow, the law will begin to manifest steps for you to take that will then help you manifest the destiny that is within us. See, I think that's where people forget is that they'll say, well, I'm doing this, the behavior maybe, or they're saying the words, but that feeling is the opposite, that energetic feeling. They're working different. against themselves. Yeah. Because yeah. they're saying one thing, but they're feeling something else. Exactly. So there has to be a convergence. There has to be coherence between the word coming out of your mouth and the feeling of your heart and soul. And that's not to say we, you're going to feel that way all the time. Yeah. That's why we call it a practice. Yes. You know, it's you wake up and you practice until you notice that most of the time you're feeling connected. Most of the time you're feeling supported. Most of the time you're feeling that you have more than enough. And then when 50.1% of your subjective is in that feeling tone, life changes. See, that to me is the key. Yeah. And that's the key. You also have a wonderful, you have a CD out, and I feel like it's like Vanna White here, but the answer <laughs> is you. It was a PBS special, and what is that about, The Answer the, Is You? The Answer Is You is a, a PBS special and a book of the same title, mm -hmm. and it was a, a powerful mm -hmm. evening uh, with um, my Agape International Choir under the direction of my wife, Ricky B.B. Um, Phenomenal Will, force in herself, oh, by the my way. God. Yes. Totally yes. and completely. Will I Am was there. Saida Garrett, who wrote Man in the Mirror for Love Michael Jackson. Yeah. Um, and then I spoke, basically bringing people to an awareness that everything that they're seeking is really within them. Mm -hmm. And to stop looking outside for the answer, but really look within. And I gave them stories, metaphors, modern day parables, practices all embedded in this inspirational music, which was, which was one of the first times that PBS allowed us, allowed anyone to combine the music with the message. Because yeah. most of the time when you look at public broadcast, it's either a music special or, or it's an individual talking. Exactly. But they allowed us to come together and put both together. A very powerful message yeah. when you have that too. So it's you know? very dynamic and uh, and it's universal when you have music and a message. That's why I love the CD too because there you go. You know it, it creates that that power. What do you do to recharge yourself? Because there's so many people, like you said, you know, if I looked and really felt what I do every day, right? Somebody came into my shoes. Right. How do you recharge? Every well, I, I have a pattern that I do every day. You know, and I wake up, I wake up and, and look for something to be grateful for. So I'm waking up in gratitude. So that's feeding my spirit, you mm -hmm. see. And I do stretching, do some mm -hmm. yoga. And I go to the gym. Mm -hmm. I do a workout with my trainer every day. Okay. And then I, I come back and I do my uh, qigong and breathing. Okay. I make my uh, famous green shake. <laughs> <laughs> that's my breakfast. I love it. You see. And either before the shake or after the shake, I, I didn't have a, a formal meditation sitting. I actually sit and meditate so I don't go into the world with a fitful mind. Yeah. You know, I'm going into the world with an awareness that I'm connected 
you yeah. see. And so the world may throw all kinds of things at you. There's all kinds of shifts and mm -hmm. changes that go mm -hmm. on in the world. But when you're rooted in the changeless, you're able to handle it yeah. in, a, in a whole different way. Well, creating that, that kind of foundation that allows you to be grounded, centered, and solid. So as everything's hitting you, you're that, Absol absolutely. You can't, that tree. Absolutely. You know, the universe, the world is vibrate. Everything's vibration. I mean, scientists tell us this. So if you're vibrating in gratitude and celebration, which is what a real spiritual community is really about. It's about mm -hmm. celebrating the isness and the nowness and the foreverness mm -hmm. of whatever name you want to call life, yeah. you see. When you're in that vibration of celebration, joy, then the lower frequencies have a hard time clinging on to you. Yes. Because they're vibrating too slow, you see. And so then you're walking in this field, you're in the world, but you're of the vibration of celebration. So we don't come together to beg a reluctant deity to give us stuff. Yeah, because that we, you see, you hear no, that no, a lot from no, people. No, oh that, God, please give this to me. No, right? no, that's that's an yeah. old paradigm. Yes, we come together to celebrate that we have everything. Yeah, and how are we going to set it free? How am I going to set the good within me free? And that's a different shift, different vibration, different focus, different energy, and now we become an openness for the law to operate through us. What is one thing that somebody wouldn't necessarily think to ask you, but maybe you'd like to talk about that has nothing to do with anything about agape? <laughs> <laughs> They'd probably say that people are always shocked when they discover I have grandchildren. Well, <laughs> really? <laughs> for some reason. You yeah, know? yeah. And I'm shocked too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a grandfather. Yeah, I'm when a did grandfather. That when did that happen? Yeah, yeah. 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 So How like, many? Uh, I think about six. Six. My wow. son has you three sons. Early. My son has three kids. Three. Wow. Uh, Ricky's son has two. Ricky's daughter has a has a son. That's wow. six. And then they both have relationships that have kids. So they call me Baba, oh. and they call That's her Mama. My, it's so funny, Baba. Yeah. That in Yugoslavian is grandmother. Really, so, Baba? Yeah, yeah, Baba. Yeah. So, so they yeah. call me, in the community, they call me Baba Michael. And, uh, wow. and so it's very interesting because I'm very youthful, very young. Yeah, and, you've got and, that and, spirit that is, you know, that, that's the attraction. I can outrun of, my kids. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you've got to show them your shoes. This is good. <laughs> my toe shoes? Yes, your toe shoes, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you're, you're, you know, you're on the track and running. And, yeah, and yeah, I, 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 I yoga. I, do, yeah. I lift weights. I run. I, I stretch. Yeah. So what is an intention that you would like to see one intention for that myself you, for for the I would say for, for the, the world. world for the people that may be watching and viewing this that you would like them to get out of n not just the products but your message Absolutely. to people you know when we talk about intention many people are suffering from an intention deficit disorder they have no intention whatsoever they wake up every single day and they're pulled by circumstances and the circumstances and the conditions determine how they're going to react moment by moment. That's backwards. That's the tail wagging the dog. When you establish an intention, you're taking your life back. You want to have an intention to be great. You, ha we, you want to have an intention to live an excellent life. You want to have an intention to re-gift the life that has been given you. Now if you establish an intention along those lines that includes creativity, generosity, kindness, and, and a harmonizing prosperity, the world will stop dragging you around and your intention will begin to deliver itself according to your unique pattern. Do not suffer from intention deficit disorder. Do not say, well, let me wait and see what's going to happen today. No, 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 that's backwards. You intend. Intend is not hard trying to make something happen. Intention is a focus of energy. It's directional. I'm heading in the direction of my greatness. I'm heading in the direction of what I'm meant to be. And then the universe supports that. Wow. I like that. It's a lot of power there. It's a lot of power. A lot of power in what you just said and, and also just soaking it in. So for the 
Transcendance. This is this is going to be on iTunes. It is on iTunes, it's Amazon. On iTunes. It's on Amazon. It's on AgapeLive.com. It's on AgapeMe.com. We've got Life Visioning. I can't wait. I'm going to read this one. This is good. This is good. And then we've also got The Answer Is You, plus a lot of other products and services. And for people that are here in Los Angeles, I would invite you all to go ag to Agape because it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, place filled with inspirational messages with Reverend Michael, but also from a wonderful music, not just from him, but the whole Agape Tremendous choir. Tremendous artists. Yeah, Tremendous yeah. Artists. I want to thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Live from Agape, we want to say, who loves you, baby? Take a bite before it takes a bite out of you. And like I said, who loves you, baby? Thanks for joining us. I want to thank my guest, Eric Handler of Positively Positive, as well as the spiritual leader and author, Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith. Also, uh, Stephen Powers, who will be up with us later in the uh, as a bonus feature. I'd also like to thank Julia Price, my chat girl, and everyone on the Life Bites team and EmpowerMe.tv. This was such an, a fun and inspiring interview from both guys, both Reverend Michael as well as Eric today. We definitely had to jump right in. So join us next week as we explore the topic of women power. Go women! We'll have Jody Wing, best-selling author of The Art of Social War, in studio talking about how to navigate Hollywood, and comedian Suzanne Wang, a three-time cancer survivor and thriver, will be making us laugh and give us all a little hope at the same time. You don't want to miss that one.